笑。我不相信考古学家在几千年之后，在无人迹的海滨，在曾是繁华过的废墟上，拾得一根枯骨。我的枯骨石。他岂能知道这根枯骨是曾经了二十世纪的烈焰燃烧过的？又有谁能在地层里寻得那些受尽了磨难的牺牲者的泪珠呢？那些泪珠曾被封禁于千重的地狱。Ai Weiwei is a really significant international artist, possibly the most significant international artist working today. He is speaking about his own age. He's forming ideas in physical form, in a way that is incredibly interesting and which、uh, communicates very directly with people. He works within this maelstrom of political difficulty. His passport has now been taken by the Chinese authorities. He can't travel outside of China. He's been detained. He's been beaten. He's had to have surgery for the injuries that he sustained. He's made works which are very much about his captivity, his imprisonment. He's a polymath artist who seems to be able to work in almost any medium. He's also an architect. He's never been here, but we sent him photographs and plans, and also information about this place. That this used to be a coal mining area and is no more. That we are on the Yorkshire coal field here. That the wealth of this estate came from coal. That we're surrounded by communities who have had very, very difficult times over many centuries. And I think all these things informed him and made him feel that this was a good place for him to work. I just arrived this morning here at Yorkshire Sculpture Park. I'm the first time here, and kind of overwhelmed what I saw here, especially if we talk about the show, the exhibition of Iverway. Outside the chapel here, the iron tree, which is, I mean, you cannot describe. It's unbelievable. Together with the architecture of the chapel, together with the, the nature, the trees. So it's unbelievable.、Uh, even so, knowing the piece, I have to say I've never so,、uh, seen it installed like this. Actually, this was an exhibition that has happened slightly unexpectedly because last year we were offered the loan of this very beautiful piece called Iron Tree. It's a very significant work by Ai Weiwei. Starting with that loan and looking where we thought that it would work really well in the sculpture park, decided on placing it here in the grounds of the chapel. I went to Ai Weiwei's studio and said. Would we be able to show some of the fairy tale chairs? And the fairy tale chairs came from a very iconic project that Ai Weiwei did in 2007 in Kassel in Germany, where he invited 1,000 Chinese tourists to apply for visas and to come to Kassel as tourists for two weeks. And of course, what the project was designed to do was to show how hard it was for ordinary citizens to travel. And indeed, some people didn't even have birth certificates, so it was a very, very difficult. Process, but one which they managed, and together with the 1,001 tourists came 1,001 chairs. And these are chairs from the Qing Dynasty that runs from 1644 to 1910. And the chairs were placed in rooms in Documenta, and they were sort of emblematic of the Chinese people who had come, but also they were there for people to use, to sit on, and you could take them from room to room and use them. We asked Ai Weiwei whether we could show some of the chairs, and a couple of weeks later, not knowing whether he would ever come back to us with anything, he came back with a drawing, with a plan of how the chair. Would be, and so we now have nine rows of five chairs, so 45 chairs in all, and they form a kind of congregation in the chapel. And I suppose we're inviting people to sit, to think, to think about the people who may have been in the chapel over the last 270 years, and to consider the lives of the people who may have occupied those chairs over the centuries. Trees, 1940. One tree, another tree, each standing alone and erect. The wind and air tell their distance apart. While I was researching Ai Weiwei, I kept coming across reference to his father Ai Qing, 
and then gradually started to read the poetry. His father was a very important poet. While we were really intent on allowing Ai Weiwei's voice to be heard in this building, this other voice came into being, and this was Ai Ching's voice. And we communicated with Ai Weiwei and said, would we be able to read his father's poetry? And he was absolutely delighted. And Ai Ching himself is a man who has suffered extraordinary privation. When you come into the chapel, you can sit and read some of the poetry, and then on the first Sunday, of each month at two o'clock we'll have readings by Ai Cheng. I think for us this chapel has been such a labour of love over such a long time. It's a really important place. To have Ai Weiwei here as the opening project is really important but it's not just Ai Weiwei the name, it's this particular body of work which for me is so resonant, is so important in terms of considering human values, what really matters to us, what's really important in our lives. And I think, I hope, will be a kind of touchstone, a place that people want to be over the coming months. The 更漫长的愿望